Okay, in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make this part. But notice instead of actual dimensions, they have uh, D designations. And that's because we're using parametric constraints. And hopefully you have this chart all filled out. Uh, we did a couple of these in class, but just to kind of reiterate a few things. When it says, like, there's a 5 third ratio between the overall plate width to the overall plate depth, you need to express that as an equation. And then since this is referencing D0 here, I look and find D0. Looks like D0 is equal to 3, so 3 times 5 thirds is equal to 5. If you have something that's 20 times smaller than the overall width, I want to find where it says overall width. That's D1, so I put D1 divided by 20. 5 divided by 20 is 0.25, and continue filling out this chart um, and come back to this video, I guess, once you have that all done. Let's assume you do have that all done. And let's look at how you would make this. So you make just your basic rectangle. And then the first dimension that you put on here, your overall plate depth, instead of typing in an actual number like 3, no, I'm sorry, you do type in 3 you need one real dimension and then all the other ones you tell it what it is alright so now that was three instead of typing in five here for the overall plate width we're going to type in our d0 times five thirds and then it shows you what the actual dimension is here finish your sketch we're going to extrude this and the extrusion is actually going to be uh, D1 divided by 20. Let's make a new sketch on the front of this. We're making a slot. You actually have a slot tool, if I can find it, and put under rectangle. The slot width here is half the overall plate depth. So that'd be D0 divided by 2. That's not where that belongs. I can always just pick this up and move it around if I want. Uh, the slot with location, and here I might need a reference back and see what they're referring to. Okay, so there was our D4. Slot with location is D5. So it's going to this point. is supposed to be your D1 times 4 fifths. It's uh, 4 fifths the overall plate width. And then you have your slot depth location. And in this case it's talking about from this line to the center point and click the center point. There we go. It's one third the overall plate depth. So I type in overall plate depth is D0 divided by three would be a third. Last one we need for this is how big this slot actually is. And this is telling me that the slot diameter is the same as the plate thickness, so that's D2. And that all looks good. So we should be able to extrude this out. And this should be the same as the overall plate width, which was uh, D2 not the overall plate width, but the the thickness of the plate. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video. You can imagine we're just going to keep adding in... Well, I guess I don't have to pause it. We still have plenty of time. There's just one more feature. So there's a circle that's over here. And I believe with the the hole for this... We're going to dimension, now nah, let me just check. We're going to dimension from here to here first. And 
then from the top of the plate down to the center. And lastly, the diameter of the hole. Okay, so in that order, we have the hole width location up at the top. It says that is one quarter the overall plate width. Plate width is D1. Divided by four would be a quarter of it. For the depth location, it's two thirds the overall plate depth. Plate depth is D0. So times two thirds. And then the hole diameter is twice the slot radius. Slot radius was D7, so D7 times D7 times 2. Alright, finish this out, extrude that chunk, and cut it, and that should be the same as D2. Okay, perfect. So now your instructions ask you to find the, the volume and the surface area. This is something where if you had an inventor, you'd be following along with me. I'm assuming since uh, you guys are at your home schools, you do not have access to it. So you just right click part one, go to I properties, and then under physical, if you change this material to anything, anything, even gold, it'll tell you your volume, which is not affected by uh, material type is 3.464 cubic inches and your surface area is 33.25 square inches. Okay. Now it wants you to go back and change the D0. So if we go under manage parameters D0 instead of being 3, we want to change this to 1.5. So if that was 1.5, we go back to our I properties, go back to physical, and if we say update, the new answer that you should be writing down on page number 5 is that your volume is 0.433, your surface area is 8.313 square inches. 0.433 cubic inches for volume, 8.313 square inches for surface area. Okay, that's the first half of your assignment. The second half of your worksheet asks for you to create this part out of aluminum. And they've went through and they've labeled things like top width and overall height and overall width, but they've left out dimensions again. They have instead another page over here where it has directions for the overall height is 2 inches the top width is 0.5 inches the right height and now it starts to get into the equation part it's a quarter less than half the overall height so it depends on how you add your dimensions in here but you're following the same kinds of steps so if I look under my parameters for this the other half of the worksheet asks you to go back and to label a couple of things for example, this whole overall height, they have a section for comments, and in here you could just type in overall height. That way, as you're going back to check this later, you could see what everything is over here. Um, you could also decide to come in, and instead of having D0, you could call this overall height. But that's going to mess with everything that references D0, which in this case is at least three different dimensions. And they may even pop up in red. Contains bad characters, so I'd have to go back and change all of these. Right? Or I might have to change these first and then type that in. So, depends how you do it. I'd rather just comment everything out here. And then, as I need to go back and change stuff, I can. Which you do have to do, because first off, it asks for you to uh, find physical properties for the overall width and the right to hold center and things. 
So when I asked you for overall width, you'd find it here. And for me, that was 3 inches. Um, the next one was right to whole center. And that was a special feature. It's actually a forced dimension. And that's 0.563. Your whole to whole center is again on this list. Whole center to center, 1.375. Then it asks for volume, surface area, and mass. And if you remember from the earlier part of this video, that'd be under here. You go to Eye Properties, you change it to Physical. You make sure it's aluminum this time because we're asking for mass. And mass is affected by material type because it has a density. So the mass in this case is 0.297. The surface area is 44. 293 square inches. Your volume is 3.03 .03 cubic inches. Then you are to go back into your parameters and it wants you to change the overall width of the part here. Instead of this being the D0 times one and a half inches to change your overall width instead to 3.5 and your top width needs to change to 3 eighths. Then it asks you to find the new overall width which in this case is going to be three and a half your right to whole center change to 0.46875 your whole center to center is 1.625 your volume which is a physical property you can find here I properties physical all of these say NA so you update because you made changes and your new uh, volume is 2.606 cubic inches. Your new surface area is 48.957 square inches. And your new mass is 0.255 pounds. Okay. The last half of the worksheet is an optional thing. And if you want the extra credit, you can come back in and do that. It's something for you to work through on Inventor. And I believe that's it for the worksheet. Make sure you have your name on it. And make sure you fill out all of the questions, not just the conclusion questions. And there's an extra one on the bottom of um, oh, where this one shows up. I'm trying to find a page number for you. There's an extra question on page number seven not seven page six it might be seven make sure you look it over for extra questions there's things in between each of these parts good luck